Alright, welcome to my redstone test world, which has over time become more than my redstone test world. But anyways, um, I recently made a map with Gamma Ray 89. It is called Dispenser Madness. It's actually the fourth map I made in the DTC or ma Massive Multiplayer Maps uh, that came out wrong. Um, Induce D Detroit's community stream. Uh, many of us make maps. A lot of the regulars do. And I have participated in four collabs so far. And Dispensed Madness is my fourth one. And that's with Gamma Ray 89. There we go. That That's much better. And what's going on is that it's basically a control point map. And your team has to own all six control points be uh yeah all six control points and the, stop the other team from owning all six and at the start each team begins with three and you gather items like gravel food arrows infinity bows things like that in chests uh no and not just and dispensers that are powered by pressure plates so you just grab and go and it's a uh, general maze. I'll do a walkthrough of the map soon. I've been planning on that anyways. To do a walkthrough of all four of those maps I've made. As well as get some download links going in a collective thread. But anyways, I wanted to go over the redstone in Dispensed Madness. Um, because, okay, this is a mock-up control point. In the map, it's yellow and blue, so you can easily see which team has which control point. Yellow wool is Englishly easily dis distinguishable from blue, etc. But for this test, I have green to represent myself and purple to represent gamma ray. So there we go. Green and purple. And as you can see right here, I currently own this control point. And to, for Gamma to get his control point back, he drop gravel in the chute like that, and the control point becomes his. As you can see, if Gamma tries to add more gravel to the control point, he keeps it, but it doesn't stack up, it does not collect, and as soon as I place my gravel in, it becomes mine again. And this setup is infinitely toggleable. And works like a charm. So, uh, the basic concept behind this is to have an easy to uh, control control point, preferably one that could be TNT proof if necessary. Even though there is no TNT in this map, this uh, idea is TNT proof if you like make the outline obsidian and maybe do trim way up above and only have TNT powerable by the ground or something like that. Bomberman style. Um, but this the setup is TNT proof because all the redstone can be as far down as you want. In the map it's below, below the entire playfield which is nether brick floor even though you're given no picks to break through. And it's illegal to break through blocks anyways. But because gravel falls down and it will fall straight down through the chute, you could have the redstone down as far as you want. And the control points will still work just fine. Ambience. <laughs> so, the first thing... The first problem that we came up with was, uh, that was solved was the TNT problem where it could blow up the control points, blow up the levers, the buttons you need to, for other things to, to switch it if you need it and things like that. And that's done by the gravel key. Not It could be sand too, but, but sand could be crafted in the sandstone and we went with gravel instead because of that reason. And... Yeah, and gravel is also infinite, 
You could use like water buckets for keys or mine carts, but those both will take a while, take longer to get to the uh, trigger, and depending on the setup, will not be infinite. And water would probably even be one shot only, I would think. But I mean, we run with gravel, and for it to be infinite, the gravel has to disappear because if we, for example, remove this and the gravel stacks, the control point will always be green. Even if purple tries to switch it, you can't do anything about it. It will always be green, and that's that's not the point of control points at all. Um, let me put this piston back. So you want it to be infinite switchable, and by that we need to get rid of the gravel. So the first set up here is this. That's the point of this piston. Let me just remove this real fast. When the gravel lands, the power goes through the gravel block into this uh, redstone circuit. And it pulls back both pistons, holding the block beneath the gravel. I apparently went through a repeater. And the gravel will follow through. Um, I actually found this interesting in the test world, which I made after, actually. Um, the gravel breaks into a drop. On the map itself, there is a delay between... No, not a delay. An extension of power right here to this redstone torch that powers the uh, piston so the piston will retract retract for a longer length of time and the gravel will fall completely through and on dispensed madness when the gravel falls completely through it falls into the void so that way on SMP you won't get block uh, drop lag so if this point switches a lot there will be a lot of gravel floating around and that will create lag for a lot of people so falling into the void is the easiest solution to get rid of it completely for good and that's what's going on here uh, not not here in the map itself and so when it's powered it also sends power through this repeater into an RS Norlatch which is the uh, main control in the map so when it our Snowlet flips. The uh, power is now on this side instead of that. And the power is now on that instead of this. And that's basically how it determines which team has the point. Um, I have... Uh, I have the power come from this same wire. But an uh, inverter beneath the purple one. So when the per when this is unpowered, the purple will have the point. When it's powered, green will have the point. And from here, it's fairly simple to uh, get more than one points in. We have six. And that's simply done by having an AND gate. When green has all five points, for example, the note block green will win. This torch will turn on. If any of the points are still missing, the, the torch will be off, like that. But as soon as green's torch turns on, or purple's, then green or purple um, purple win, and the other team loses, and no blocks play as on Spence Madness. They'll actually play the Zelda tune, the chest opening theme. And because of the setup, after a win, victory, it is possible for the controls to switch back. So we need a small wind detector, which is simply done by pistons, uh, normal pistons, non-sticky pistons. Uh, so when green wins, this top piston is powered and the green block is pushed out to here. When green loses and purple wins, there's a piston beneath here. And the piston pushes the green block up instead of out. And even if it, even if the piston retracts and green has less than six points than what it, 
than when it had it at its victory. It doesn't retract the green block, a uh, green wool, and green will still be declared the winner. And you basically have two of these with one green and one purple, and they both alternate. So green wins. The wool will come out to here, and if green loses, let's mimic that by cheating and doing this. This piston will push the green wool up instead, so you can't see it, and it'll push purple into its matching spot on matching spot in the wind detector. And that's how the wind detector works. This wind detector for mod raiders is at the bottom in all the redstone beneath the map in the center of all the redstone there's gold ore and what is it blue lapis ore to mark mark that point so if it becomes confusing we could, you could always go beneath and see who actually won because it could be quite hectic there could be quite a lot of switches rapid switches things like that and then you might not it might be fairly hard to tell who actually won. So that's why we have the wind detector. And if this comes off, you can see purple is still there. And green is not. This is actually still powered. See even if green did get all six after purple did. Green, the green block would not be here as it would if they actually won. It would still show the same setup with the air block here and the winner, true winner in its winning post. So that's the basic concept behind Dispensed Madness. My favorite feature would be this. Also, because of pistons creating lag, in SMP, I would recommend putting these to four so it creates a longer pulse and it's not super rapid, not one tick, which one tick pulses aren't the best. Also, I would have it so these two, these two pistons right here are not connected. Um, this is because it's kind of compact, but on the actual map itself, it is not not connected. So only one of these pistons retracts. And as I said before, this retracts for more than one tick, as it does here. Um, other bits of lag is really long redstone wires are uh, pretty bad. So for the AND gate, it's best better to have it separated like in the map it's actually like this three can three control points comes to one one intersection on its half of the map and it creates one of these and then these two connect together to form another one here for example and that that way that you won't have huge wires changing all at once you would only have smaller wires which would create less lag for SMP users for people with poor computers poorer computers and uh, people with poor internet connections as I experience sometimes myself um, but yes, so try to be lag free. Fa one piece of falling gravel or at most six. If all six change at once, which would be uh, proof of a hectic map. But yeah, there we go. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you understand it. I hope I explained it well enough to, for one to understand it. It's basically one hour Snorlatch, an AND gate with six inputs, and a wind detector, and note blocks. 
a note block melody for the wind detector. And as you can see, if either team wins, it will power the note blocks. So there we go. Simple, simple redstone to create a control points map for Minecraft SMP. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, be sure to keep a lookout for uh, a walkthrough of the actual map itself coming to my channel soon, as well as walkthroughs of the other maps I've made. Uh, well, it can't really be walkthroughs because it's not like a CTM or Race for Wool or whatever. It's a DTC, which is just a battlefield. But a tour of them will be coming. Yeah, excuse me. And you could expect that. So thanks for watching. This is Dungan. See ya.